And it's go time. Episode 3 in the moment podcast coming at you right now. Um, so this past weekend was a big weekend. We crossed the great finish line, or not finish line, or reoccurring start finish line of <laughs> February 27th, which is my birthday. And uh, turned the big 2-9 this past week, which was and uh, a big moment, one away from being 30, I am getting old quick, um, and just can't believe how how crazy life is, and how time passes, and have two kids and a beautiful wife at 29, I'm very, very blessed, we, um, Haley and I were lucky enough to have my parents come and watch our kids um, the night before uh, my birthday, we were able to go on a little date night and spend some time together. And uh, it's so awesome to be able to slow down and people that have multiple kids know how crazy life can be. Um, just being able to get alone time with your, uh, your spouse. And um, it was really great to be able to go, to go to dinner and sit down and just talk and laugh and um, rekindle our friendship that is uh, so pure and so lucky to have a wife who is my best friend in the world and can make me laugh constantly at the silliest, funniest stuff. So I'm so blessed to have her. We went to dinner, had a great night. Um, we did cry a couple times because we instantly missed our babies that are fully active and drive us crazy all the time. But the moment they're gone, uh, life doesn't feel the same and the house doesn't feel the same. Um, luckily, we had each other to laugh and cry about it and uh, had a lot of fun. But um, the next morning, we we woke up early, and I was able to bring Haley with me down to uh, Miami Homestead to the racetrack for the Xfinity race, which is a big race. We were really excited. Um, first mile and a half with Joe Gibbs Xfinity race team, and um, what a what a crazy crazy long day. We got there, and um, we uh, we just you know instantly went straight to the racetrack, and luckily had our motorhome there, and. Got to spend some more time together, take naps together for the first time in years, uh, which was a blessing. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of together, it's been a while since she's been able to be there with me on a race day. So it was just nice to have uh, the companionship pre-race and uh, was feeling really good and excited to get in the race car. Um, we take off in the uh, in the race with our Bass Pro Supra and uh, our car was was pretty good. It was extremely good on the long run. I don't know if there was anybody really faster than us on the long run. Um, we struggled a little bit early in the race on fire off speed, on restarts. Um, just having the car was a little bit tight to start. And it just took a couple laps to come in. But once once I could get the front tires to cut, there wasn't really anybody much faster than us there. So um, we, we played kind of a long game strategy. We didn't take tires in the middle of the first two stages. Um, just to have extra sets lane for the end and really had ourselves, um, Chris Gale had put us in a great position in the on the final stage to really be able to do whatever we needed to do. We had four sets lane in the pits um, and we still had a fast car on older tires compared to the other guys. So I think we were sitting in a really great position and we fired off of the last stage. I think we were fifth or sixth and there was a couple of um, incidents that happened back to back and I'm not sure what happened but Caution came out, and as the caution came out, my water temperature uh, just went through the roof, and our gauges turned red when it gets past our critical level, um, and it, it turned red all of a sudden, and didn't really know why, and just went to a crazy number as far as temperature, and I knew something was wrong. Uh, it turns out that a 716th bolt from some car or something went through our grill screen into our radiator, knocked a hole in the radiator dumped all the water out, um, you know, with no indication to me that this happened. I would have never seen it or felt it. Um, and then, um, you know, when all the water comes out of the engine, it runs hot and starts melting and, and breaking things in the motor. So uh, we heard her motor, didn't get to finish the race, which was a very disappointing ending to what was going to be a promise, promising final third of the race, um, which I was really excited about. I think we were going to have a great chance at winning the race, um, if not leading some laps and really competing for the win. Uh, but all in all, I think all the guys on the team, they, they certainly built a great race car. Chris made great calls, and I was you know running a good race, improving, getting used to being back in the Xfinity Series for the first time, and 
three or four years. Um, I think we had it set up really well, and yeah, just sometimes things don't work out. It seems to be a really long streak of bad luck for anything that I'm driving right now, where um, we seem to be doing great throughout the race, and then something something seems to put a damper where there was loose lugs, somebody beating you by six feet to get in the Daytona 500, um, crash in the Xfinity, in the Xfinity uh, race in Daytona. Um, the, the race that's gone smooth so far is, or so to speak, smooth was the Daytona road course um, with the Gaunt brothers. So hopefully we can get some more of that good momentum going as we rebound and turn around and go straight back to Las Vegas this weekend with uh, the 54 guys. We got the uh, Toyota Mobile One Supra this weekend. It's a really cool looking car. It's all white. Uh, I think it looks really fresh um, to me. So Vegas is a place that I've gotten better and better at it over the last couple of years and had some really strong runs last last two or three races there. So I'm excited to get in the Xfinity series there. There is some nuanced things that are that are different that I didn't hadn't really calculated for in the Xfinity series, just how these cars handle compared to cup cars and um it is a, a bit of a change, but um but when you're driving great equipment like uh Joe Gibbs racing Toyotas it makes that transition quite a bit easier. So my my goal is the sky, and, and I want to win this race. I want to win every stage. We have to start 20th because we didn't finish the race in the in the previous race. So I'm going to be aggressive and try to get this thing to the front, win the first stage, and uh, keep it out front because that's I feel like this, this equipment's capable of doing it, and so am I. And we're going to go put on a great show out in Vegas, um, I guess, to spin, spin back here to our day. Um, back in Homestead. So after the race is over, we, you know, we go to get on the team planes after the race. Um, we take off, I think around nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. Um, but there was really bad fog that rolled into, um, the airport that we usually land at. And it was so thick. We had to, had to go to another airport that was about an hour and a half away, um, where none of our vehicles were. Um, they didn't have buses set up or anything. So, I think there was probably two or three hundred people, race race crew people, at midnight trying to find Ubers and vans to try to drive another hour and a half back to their cars to, to then be able to drive their home. So it was a long night. Um, you know, after the bad luck of the the bolt going through the radiator, things just kept getting longer and, and longer. But uh, I think we ended up getting to bed around two thirty in the morning, um, and I think we were both excited anyways because we got to wake up and see our babies. Um, again, and uh, that's always fun, even though they're full of energy and ready to go first thing in the morning um, when, when you didn't get much sleep, but it's always worth it. Um, so that was a birthday, and just, again, I'm so lucky and blessed to have 29 years on, on God's green earth and to continue to grow as a person and have the opportunity to do what I do and driving race cars and uh, meeting great people. Um, it just keeps getting better. Life isn't always easy. It's definitely tough and we're certainly in a challenging time as far as my career. Um, you know, we always have something going on. If, um, if it's not career, it's financial. If it's not financial, it's, you know, it's family or relationship. I think everybody goes through things like that in life and there's just always seasons where there's challenges, um, that you grow through and it's kind of the way that you choose to face it, whether you, um, you allow it to, to bring you down and steal your joy and your hope as a person, or you just see it as a, a growing period to learn and um, to strengthen yourself. And certainly one of those times for me, as far as the career side, uh, which is something I, I had never faced until the past year or so when when Geico left um, Jermaine Racing and uh, my opportunity to race with them full-time in the Cup Series was gone away. And um, it's certainly been quite the battle and still in that fight every day searching and looking for anybody who wants to help out um, to this year and, and next year to get me uh, more opportunities to partner together um, to be able to, to keep my career going. I Like I've said over and over in a lot of interviews, I, I feel like I'm the best driver, one of the best drivers <clears throat> in the sport. Um, I feel like I can win races in the Cup Series right now and, and battle for championships. I uh, just need that opportunity um, to go out and prove it uh, with a high-level team. Um, you know, I've been thankful for the teams that I've worked for over the years, but I'm um, really looking forward to getting that real opportunity with a team that can win week in and week out. So hopefully if anybody's out there <laughs> looking to sponsor 
I have um, a few races more this year that, that we can sell, that we have full open um, cars, and if I can get a little bit of backing, I'll be able to run more races in, in great equipment and um, you know, hopefully grow partnerships and relationships. Uh, this is a great year for me and, and potential partners to grow at a small level and then move into a bigger level in the future as far as more races and, and um, you know, more intention. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of what's been going on with us and, and the calling and, and, you know, hoping that somebody's going to help you out in your career is, a, is certainly a stressful time. But, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a moment in time where I feel so close with, with God and the fact that it's uh, totally in His hands and it's in His timing. And if, if He didn't want me in racing, he wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be racing this weekend. I know that uh, He can stop things on a dime and He can keep things going and His plan is so much bigger and better than anything that um, my little finite brain can really put together and try to plan for and make happen and I just trust that He's got great things for my family and I and uh, as long as I can um, continue to um, be a great representative of Christ and, and hopefully bring joy and and happiness um, to people's life, no matter whether I'm racing or not, or having a good day or a bad day on the track. I think I always seem to, I've grown in so much peace with that, and that uh, God's using me for something. He's using all of us for something, no matter what your job, your life, your finances are. Um, you're always there to impact people, and um, you know it's it's not the easy thing to choose joy and kindness every day. The easy thing is actually to be grumpy and mad and, and selfish. Um, I think the more that we choose to do the hard thing and be kind, be hopeful, um, and be joyful and grateful, um, the more that life seems to open doors. Um, and I think if anything, you just are happy. I think sometimes just hearing yourself vocally be grateful um, can be a superpower in your life as far as just being in general happy. Um, whether it's just saying, you know, I'm just thankful uh, and hearing yourself say that I think is is a hidden superpower within all of us. Um, something I'm thankful for that, that I've been doing for the past couple years and it's kind of growing and getting more and more fun is I've been go-karting a lot to train in the middle of the weeks each week over at GoPro Motorsports Park and um, now that my now that I'm at Joe Gibbs with the Xfinity program, I got some fun young teammates where I'm the old guy, so to speak, at 29, and um, they're out there wanting to. Uh, we're we're out there every week, challenging each other, pushing each other. We got little games where each session that we do, we hop off and do 25 push-ups, but um, we have it set up to where if we pass each other um, in a certain point in the corner, a certain place around the track, it's an extra 10 push-ups um, to. Uh, the teammate that got passed, or if you don't complete a certain amount of passes, that's an extra 10 push-ups. So we push each other and challenge each other, and, um, and the whole model of iron sharpens iron, and I think that if we can all get better, we're, we're all just going to be better. I don't. I think as team teammates and um, as such a big team, you can't be selfish and, and only want yourself to succeed, or else your, your time as a as a, as a winner or a champion is, is only going to be for a short period if only one team's winning and the rest aren't. I think all high tides raise all ships, and uh, the more we can help each other, we're only going to get better. So I think it's a really fun thing. I, I, within, within the past two weeks, I think we've all gotten better at at least riding go-karts and the way that we race each other there. So you know that that's got to translate something very fun. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on outside the NASCAR world that I'm excited about. Obviously, I've talked a lot about trading cards and sport cards. I've been getting more and more into that, um, hopping on live streams and, and things like that with, with card breakers. I think it's a, a really fun concept. Um, but uh, one of the things that is really cool as far as the sports world to me, I'm obviously a diehard Hornets fan. Haley danced for the Hornets for a couple years. A big Braves fan. I followed them my whole life um, from the time I was, uh, I think, six or seven or eight, somewhere right in there. We got to meet the Braves when it was Bobby Cox and Chipper Jones, Andrew Jones, Rafael Fercal, Javier Lopez. So just been mega diehard ever since then, uh, Braves fan. And then probably my biggest fandom comes with the Carolina Panthers. Massive, massive fan. 
so lucky to start a friendship with our new head coach, Matt Rule. He came down to the Daytona 500 with us last year. Unfortunately, while him and his family were there, it rained out. Um, and they didn't get to stay for the actual race, but to get to know him and meet him, he's a special person, not only as a coach, but just a, a great human being, and so is his family. Uh, such a lovely, great family, and um, they're, they're such kind people. I think, uh, I'm going to go back to the Hornets a little bit. I am so pumped to watch the metal ball every night. The dude is so good at 19 years old. I have not been like the most diehard basketball fan, but this has turned me into such a basketball fan because our Charlotte team has some hope, and I think he's doing some great things. The things that him and Miles Bridges do as far as alley-oops and dunks it is like it is showtime basketball. It's super fun to watch, so I'm trying to buy up all the LaMelo rookie cards I can get, and uh, I think that's going to go through the roof to kind of tie into my card hobby. Uh, the dude is insane, and everybody knows that. Um, then also we got Brave Spring Training, which I've been kind of keeping up with and watching. The, uh, is, it's kind of hard to find streams of that. But, um, man, the Braves were so close last year, and I thought I was going to get to watch this, the uh, World Series with Captain when he was first born. He was maybe a couple weeks old, and they just missed out to the Dodgers who went on to win it. And they're going to be tough again this year, but, man, I... Uh, the, the young guys on the Braves are so exciting. And um, first of all, like Ian Anderson, the pitcher, who came out of nowhere, young guy, got two starts or three starts in the regular season and then straight into the playoffs and just dominated in the playoffs. So it was probably our best-looking pitcher. And we made it that far without Mike Soroka, who was uh, probably our pure number one going into this year. and um, So I'm buying up all those guys' rookie cards as well as um, Drew Waters, who's not even um, on the team yet, but I'm sure he'll get called up. The guy is just as much as a 2020 threat as anybody. He's got massive speed and got good power switch hitter. Um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see where they, how they fit him. Pache, who had a huge playoffs for a young guy who didn't get much run during the regular season, and then Ozuna and Acuna, who was you know next level superstar MVP. Um, on our team, so man, they gotta they gotta get great problems on the Braves, and uh, it's gonna be fun to watch this year. I'm fired up for opening day and to see uh, see how the Braves do this year. So all that, of course, turns into to sports cards and and how you invest in those and uh, fun, unique ways of. Um, I've always wanted to be a GM of a sports team, so it's kind of like a little mini test to you pick up players that you think are gonna be something special and. Um, you can benefit you financially if you're looking to flip sports cards or if you're just a collector uh, you can have the card before the guy gets big and that's kind of a fun investment and game for me so um, that's some more about my passion uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and uh, we'll talk to you next week after Vegas hopefully we're talking about bringing home a trophy and uh, first one of the year